Oh, and it's live. We're on the air. So hello, my name is Anne-Marie Bonneau and I am the Zero Waste Chef. And I'm going to show you today how to make um, sauerkraut, which is the gateway ferment. Um, so I, uh, my blog is zerowastechef.com and I went plastic, plastic free in 2011 and don't produce any garbage to speak of, um, which with a bit of planning really isn't that difficult. So in my kitchen, I follow three rules. I don't buy packaged food, I don't buy processed food, and I don't throw anything out. So, um, I'm, oh, so I'm convinced anybody who's trying to simplify their life will stumble onto fermentation at some point. Um, that's how it happened with me. I just started off, went plastic free, and then, you know, I couldn't buy processed food anymore. So I had to start making more things myself. I'd always cooked. Then I started making, I had made bread, but I used commercial yeast. Then I started using uh, wild yeast. Um, so that's just a, a sourdough starter that I nurtured myself. And uh, so it just went from there. So uh, fermentation is a method for preserving food, uh, but it's so much more. So uh, one of the many great things about fermentation is it helps prevent food waste. So tonight, before this webinar started, I um, got out a bunch of vegetables to put in the sauerkraut, and I had some carrots that were past their prime, but they weren't they weren't rotten or anything. They just I had to use them up right away. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll put them in sauerkraut. And if you have a huge amount of something, you can ferment it, and that preservation helps prevent food waste. And food waste has been in the news a lot lately. Here in the U.S., we waste about forty percent of what we produce for various reasons. That's a different webinar. So, how does food ferment? Well. All produce, whoops, sorry, I gotta close the window here. All produce, like this cabbage, ooh, which matches my shirt, um, is covered in lactic acid bacteria. And these bacteria are anaerobic, so they thrive when they're cut off of oxygen. Um, they multiply after harvest and they perform the fermentation. So they eat sugars in the cabbage and they produce acids and gases as a byproduct and that ferments the food. So there are four basic steps to making sauerkraut. So just remember, chop, uh, salt, pack, and wait. Can't believe I forgot that. I've done this so many times. Uh, so before you start, um, peel off a cabbage leaf, and I will show you why later. I'm going to put the camera down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to peel off a cabbage leaf. The lighting in here isn't so good. I have I have access to a really nice, bright, sort of commercial, pretty much commercial kitchen with Wi-Fi, and the video would be much better, but I don't have all my stuff. Like People always ask questions about my kombucha, and I pull out this scoby and, and that starter, and just different things in my kitchen. So it's nice nice to do this in my kitchen. Okay, so we did that. I like to quarter my cabbage. Sorry, oh, oh, there. So I quarter my cabbage. And then uh, I cut out the core and I save these. So I save, I save um, all little bits of vegetables when I'm prepping during the week. And put them in jars in my freezer. So there are a bunch of frozen vegetables. Some little ends of carrots and there's a chunk of cauliflower. We eat a lot of cauliflower, oh, the, the core of a cauliflower. So in goes this, and then when I have enough, I just, um, or when I have enough and I need vegetable broth, I just dump these in water so I can get them out of the jar and simmer them. 
and uh, for maybe an hour, and then I have delicious free broth. Okay, now I'm going to chop the veg, chop the um, cabbage. So uh, you can chop however you want. I'm not super picky about how I do it. Oh, sorry, I've got to move the, got to move the window. <laughs> ah, oh dear, I moved it too far. Uh, I'm in technical difficulties tonight. Uh, okay, <laughs> so uh, I'm not super picky. My daughter's working, my older daughter's working in a fancy restaurant right now, and everything she does looks beautiful, and it always turns out perfectly. And for stuff like this, I'm not too picky. I just chop it roughly. If you chop the cabbage finer, you have more surface area for the uh, lactic acid bacteria to reproduce on. So um, chopping fines kind of kind of nice, but I do it fairly coarse. So one thing you need to remember when you're making sauerkraut, most important thing, is that the vegetables have to be submerged in liquid at all times because, like I said, the lactic acid bacteria are anaerobic. So here I'm just roughly chopping my vegetables. And oh, whoops, I forgot to grab a bowl before I start. in there so I'll get to um, containers later some people um, you may have heard you're not supposed to use metal for just for when you're just making the sauerkraut a metal bowl is fine my big metal bowl is occupied right now so I'm using this bowl instead but if you don't want the sauerkraut to sit in there for a long time but just making it is fine so this one I'm going to add some grated carrots, those carrots I told you about. So grating increases the surface area too and it releases more water. You want a lot of water. Um, I just get it from the vegetables and, and you'll see. Because um, like I said, you want to have the sauerkraut submerged. So, oh, I also have a daikon radish, which I can shred up a little bit. And I'll put some in. So what I'm making right now is a cross between sauerkraut and kimchi. So it's a little bit spicy. Oh, here's my lid. I usually, so I really like this, um, this mixture. It's cabbage, carrots, radish. It doesn't have to be a daikon radish. Um, garlic, ginger, and something spicy like cayenne. But uh, I learned, well, I should have known. Um, do not add jalapeno peppers before you mix it with your hands. So do that at the end. So I'm just going to shred up a little bit to show you. This gets a lot of juice out of the vegetables. Okay, I'm going to dump that in. Oh, you can use a food processor. I just like to do it this way. I hate washing my food processor. I, I don't really like it. It's great for some things though. Here's a bunch of garlic I minced earlier. I like a lot of garlic and a lot of ginger. The ginger, um, I didn't prep before this started because I wanted to show you this trick, which some of you may already know. This changed my life. I saw my neighbor doing it. It's You can peel ginger with a spoon. We go through a lot of ginger. Um, I make a lot of ginger beer. It's really good. I like to flavor kombucha with ginger. Um, I like to cook with ginger. I like making Indian food. So anyway, there. And the nice thing is you don't peel off a bunch of the ginger. You really just peel off the peel. 
So then I would mince that and add that in, but I don't want you to have to watch me do that and spend a bunch of time. <laughs> so here are my vegetables so far. You can add different vegetables. I've put in peppers, um, anything kind of hard. I find squash doesn't work so well. Mushy stuff doesn't, doesn't work so well. Um, Oh, beets. I've put in beets. I've put in cauliflower. So for, let's pretend I cut up that whole head of cabbage, okay? I would start with a couple of teaspoons of salt for one sort of medium large head of cabbage. So you're going to add salt. We're on to step two, which is salting. We chopped, now we're salting. Um, so salt does a bunch of things. It tastes really good. It results in a crispier texture. It draws out more of the juices in the vegetables. Here, I'll put it back up to me. It slows down the fermentation, which is important if you live in a hot climate. Um, it extends the preservation. It helps prevent mold from forming. Um, oh, and the lactic acid bacteria are salt tolerant. So that helps give, it, give that type of bacteria an edge over bad bacteria. So after you add the salt, you're going to crush the cabbage with your hands. And so this is why I said don't do this with um, jalapeno. <laughs> if you want something spicy in it, put it in after. So, oh, the salt also, did I say, I don't know if I said this, the salt draws out more water. Because you want lots of water. Liquid. Um, taste it while, you're, while you go along. If it's too salty, just add more vegetables. So I made, um, I made, helped uh, make sauerkraut for our community kitchen a couple of weeks ago, and I added way too much salt. And we were out of cabbage. So uh, we added a lot of carrots and a lot of ginger, and that was such a good combination. Lots of carrots and lots of ginger. <laughs> it was really good. So you can fix it if you add too much salt. So I'm like, going to crush this with my hands. This helps break the cell walls, which also releases water. And let's see. Mm, there's a little bit of water coming out. So what I like to do at this point, I would probably crush that a little bit more. It depends. Um, Napa cabbage has a lot more water in it than uh, green or red cabbage. And it might be my imagination, but it seems to me red cabbage has even more than, than just regular green cabbage. So at this point, I put a plate and a weight on the, on the vegetables. So this helps weigh them down, which draws out more liquid. And just like real cooking show, I did this before, before we started. So here are some vegetables. Ooh, I don't wanna spill liquid on my laptop. I did that with olive oil once. Okay, so there you can see a bunch of liquid pooling. This is Napa cabbage, which like I said, has lots of liquid, but the other one will be, will be super watery too. Um, this sat for maybe an hour. And um, so now I'm going to move on to step three, which is pack the cabbage. I have different flavors in here, so I'm gonna um, wipe my hand. This one's a really good combination. This one is garlic, garlic, dill, cabbage and salt. That's it. And I've had a few people tell me they don't like sauerkraut. Well, they tell me that. They say, ew, sauerkraut. Um, and they try this one and they really like it. It tastes like dill pickles. And if you have any little cute, or if you have any cucumbers, which I do have, I should have put them in. You can chop them finely and put those in too. Cucumbers tend to go a little mushy, but just if you chop them finely and put them in here, it, it, it tastes really good. Um, 
what else did I want to say? So for this, if you're interested, so when I do this, I just say, throw some of this, throw some of that. The proportions for this one are, oh, here it is finished. There's some finished. I put in one, I'd say large head of Napa cabbage, two teaspoons of salt, one bunch of dill. It was just a like a little bunch of dill, you know, like that big around, that long. One bunch of dill and about half of a whole. I put half of one of these in. I put lots of garlic. It's really yummy. Okay, so now we're ready to pack. Oh, whoops. So you can use different types of jars. You can buy fancy gadgets to ferment um, sauerkraut and other stuff, but I just use, oh, sorry. It's my daughter texting me. Ah. <sighs> um, I just use jars. I don't have anything fancy. This is an old pickle jar. Um, and I just uh, I just washed it. You don't have to sterilize your jars. Um, just make sure they're clean. So Sandor Katz, and I'll talk about books later. I have one of his books. Um, he says sterilization is neither possible nor um, nor necessary. So. Oh, my daughter's distracting me. Her messages are popping up on my screen. It's boy trouble. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this is just an old pickle jar. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to use, even better, but I only have a few of these, is one of these jars with a uh, you know flip top lid and the rubber gasket because the um, as the lactic acid bacteria eat the sugars, they produce carbon dioxide, and that will build up in your jar. And so it releases along the rubber gasket. Um, I burp my jar every day. That just means I open it. And I do that with, with, the, with these guys too. So uh, you can use a ceramic jar. Just don't use plastic because the acid might cause um, chemicals to, to leach out of the plastic. Metal, your sauerkraut, the acid will react with metal. So glass. It's nice to be able to see in too and see what's happening. I used some dark green glass jars maybe last year, a couple of years ago. Um, and I couldn't really see what was going on and I hadn't noticed that I hadn't, the, the cabbage wasn't completely submerged and so it went mushy. And um, um, I just didn't notice. And if that happens, you just scrape off the mushy brown part and throw it out and underneath it'll be fine. Um, so I, I ate all of that after I scraped the top off and it was fine. And you can also ferment in an open crock. You can get these gorgeous German crocks and make a huge vat of sauerkraut. And they're open to the air. You have these big stone things you weigh down the sauerkraut in and the top will often be brown. So it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, let's see. Okay, so now I'm going to pack a jar. I think that's all I wanted to say about jars. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so here's my jar. And I'm going to start packing in the sauerkraut. So just take a handful, whoops, and press it down with your hand. This is super watery, which is great. It's going to be really good. So taste as you go along. Even, even like not fermented, this is really yummy. Mm. Okay, I chose a small jar so that you don't have to sit here and watch me do it forever. But see, I'm kind of smushing it down with my hand, and you can see the water coming up, the liquid. If you don't uh, get enough liquid from your cabbage, you can add water to it. I like to just, uh, you know, get the liquid from the vegetables. I never have a problem 
a couple of times I've added water. So I have so much liquid in here. Here, I'm just gonna pour, pour a bit. Ah. Okay, so there, got tons of liquid in here. What I do next, I'm going to use that cabbage leaf I told you to set aside earlier. This is actually really big. I'm gonna cut it. Okay. Here, I'm gonna put this down a bit. Ah. Okay, I'm going to shove that down onto my cabbage and make like a little lid. And then what I like to do, oops, this squirted me in the eye. I put a jar within the jar. And then that, when I close the lid, it shoves everything down. Hopefully I have put in the right amount so that this works. These are little yogurt jars I get um, at the farmer's market, the, the dairy, they give them to me because people here, uh, you can see, so it's, it's small. So at the farmer's market, people buy the yogurt from this booth. It's really good. It's St. Benoit. Um, and um, then they bring back the jars. St. Benoit takes back everything else, uh, but they can't recycle these. So I take them and they're perfect for my, uh, my in-person classes. So I give people ginger beer and kombucha in these. They're the perfect size, but they're also perfect for this. So I just, I'm gonna put the thing down again. <sighs> so I put the jar in there. Oh, I think I have it too full. And then here, sorry, I gotta take a little bit out. This happens. Oh, oops. Uh, I'm gonna take out a little bit of sauerkraut. Okay, hopefully that's enough. I'm going to put my little chunk back in there. Oops, it broke a little bit. And put my jar within the jar. Oh, it's still too much, I think. That's my daughter, my younger daughter in the background getting a snack. Ah, okay, gotta take a little bit more. It's hard to tell with these little jars how much to put in. It's not much. Okay, put my little thing back in. Okay, there it is. Hmm. Put my jar back in. Okay, and now I'm gonna close it up. Okay, and there we go. And you can see the cabbage is submerged in there. So this is a small jar. I usually don't fill up jars this small. I usually use ones like this. So, um, but just for demonstration purposes. So there you go. So we chopped. We salted, we packed. Now you wait. So just set this aside. Put it on a dish on your counter because it's going to start to gurgle and bubble. This one I'm not so worried about because it's so low. But it will start to ferment, it will bubble, and it will ooze out onto your counter. So um, just put it on a plate. Um, like I said, carbon dioxide builds up in the jar, so burp the jar every day, just open it. I made some, this this one. Oh, where did it go? Oh. 
I put a ton of ginger in it. Ton of, uh, ginger makes really fizzy drinks and uh, really fizzy ginger beer. My ginger beer is so good. Um, and so on the very first day, like after 24 hours, I opened this and it just sprayed all over. And it sprayed pink on my walls. And so it's a good idea to put a towel over it when you're opening it, just in case. And then you don't get sprayed. Um, after three days, take a taste of your sauerkraut. And if you like the flavor, then you're done. Put it in the refrigerator. And the refrigerator slows down the fermentation. But if you leave it out longer on your counter to ferment longer, then you get more gut-friendly um, microbes in there. So I let mine ferment for about a couple of months, six weeks to two months. It depends in the summer, it ferments faster. Everything ferments faster. So like last summer, I, I felt like I had a part-time job brewing kombucha because it was ready every three days. And I had to make more kombucha. And uh, yeah, it was exhausting. <laughs> and oh, safety. So I have to cover safety because I've had so many people say to me, oh, I'd really like to try fermenting food, but I'm afraid that I'll accidentally kill my whole family. So fermentation is very safe. It's actually safer than a lot of other types of food preparation. The lactic acid bacteria create an acidic environment that the bad microbes can't survive in. So, um, a lot of people say to me, I'm going to get botulism. Pardon me. But um, botulism is, uh, it can't survive. The botulinum spores can't survive in the acidic environment of um, lactic acid. The lactic acid bacteria fermentation. Um, if the top layer of vegetables isn't submerged, like I said, it can turn brown and just scrape it off and compost it. If you get mold, I haven't had mold on my sauerkraut. I've had it in other things like uh, beet kvass almost every time. I just made some. It's a drink. Almost every time I make it, I get a little bit of mold. So according to Sandor, Sandor Kraut or Sandor Katz, um, that's okay. As long as it's just white, scrape it off. Don't eat any other colors. Scrape it off, compost it, and it should be safe underneath. So that's a... That's a call you'll have to make yourself. Sandor is like the god of fermentation. I'll show you his book. So I feel pretty comfortable with what he says. Uh, this has everything you need to know about fermentation in it. Um, Michael Pollan did the, did the foreword. It's, it's like my Bible. I love it. So uh, I think that's it for safety. And I have, um, I have a couple of other books I'd highly recommend. So this is Michael Pollan's book, Cooked, and there's now a series on Netflix by the same name. And uh, it's great. I love it. So he talks about Sandor Katz in it. And The Good Gut. This is all about the, um, our gut microbiota, and it's fascinating. So uh, just the, the stuff they're finding out about, about how our gut affects our health and our mood and our weight, it's, it's just amazing. It's going to change medicine. And the thing I love about this book, it's written by um, two Stanford um, microbiologists. They're a married couple. I live, I live uh, right near Stanford, and uh, so they're local. Um, it's not woo-woo. It's not some fad diet. They, they have recipes. They don't have recipes. They have menus in the back. They have two small children, and they talk about what they feed their family in order to have a healthy gut. And it's a lot of fermented food, a lot of fiber, just basically real food. It's, you know, food you cook yourself. So this is really interesting. And, oh, yeah, and on my website, um, zerowastechef.com, I have a bunch of posts on fermentation. If you just type fermentation into the search bar, a bunch of stuff will come up. Or you can go to my blog index or my recipe index. And, uh, and that's it. So there's one person in my hangout, 
Madeline, did you have any questions? Oh, how long did you leave the weight on for? Sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, so until you have enough water, um, I, uh, you know, I've made sauerkraut in the morning and I've gone out and done a bunch of errands and then come back and finished it. If I've made it late at night and have been too tired to finish it. And then I, I cover it with a towel and I've gone to bed and, you know, then, then packed it. But it only takes about an hour to, to render enough liquid. And then, oh, good question. How long do you burp it for? So it's going to be actively fermenting for less than a week. After that, you don't have to burp it. Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. You don't have to burp it every day after that. For the first, for the first five days, seven days, it also depends on your kitchen. Um, you have to burp it every day. I'd burp it every day. And let's see, do you have any other questions? Madeline's typing questions. Um, I think that's it. I think I covered everything. So, well, thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your sauerkraut. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, there's a contact form, the contact form on my blog. Or, you, or I'm on social media, I'm on all of it, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So that's a good way to get in touch with me. Okay, well, thanks for watching. And uh, have a good night or morning, wherever you are. <laughs> Bye.